welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the that these are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first people, never video. The camp. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I'm so excited to have each of you worshiping with us this Sunday and happy Sunday. Goes out to all of my sailors and to all of you working uh, and serving in the military. Um, you and your families, we really do appreciate <clears throat> everything that you do in times of war and in times of peace and happy Sunday. Goes out to all of the youth, the young adults, and to those of you of wisdom. Um, I normally... <laughs> I normally say I'm excited about today's message. Um, mm, I'm on the fence about, <laughs> I'm kind of on the fence about today's message. Um, all messages are really God dealing with me and then asking me to share what I'm learning or how God is dealing with me with you. Today, I don't even know if this applies to anybody that's listening. This is strictly for me. And so I'm just, this is a real transparent, <laughs> this is a real transparent Sunday. So, um, Pray for me. <laughs> um, I'm going to try to be excited <laughs> about today's um, message. Um, it's it's a, um, <clears throat> we're learning how to, to spend time with God and to have a relationship with God through prayer. And one of those things is, is that we allow, we keep telling him what we want and what we desire, but we ra rarely take time to listen to what he's saying back to us. And so this is one, <laughs> this is one of the things that he said back to me. Um, and so it comes from Romans 12, Romans 12, 17 through 19. <clears throat> this is what it says. <laughs> Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends. But leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Amen. Today's message is, you can, you can. Um, our focus verse uh, is comes out of this verse, uh, Romans 12 and 18. Another translation says it like this. Do everything you can um, to keep the peace. Do everything that you can to keep the peace. I, I talk all the time. My husband is 100% blessed are the peacemakers. <laughs> like he is a 100% let's keep the peace. What I got to do? What do you need? You know, like, like you be happy and I'll figure it out. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, you know, this is one of those messages where my dad, uh, I was getting like probably the worst spanking in my life and didn't know it because my dad so eloquently was giving me a lecture that I thought he had talked himself out of spanking me, but he had not. And when he finished his lecture and I'm thinking, whew, that was close. I thought I was going to get a beat down from my dad. I mean, he didn't beat me. I'm just joking. I can't joke like that anymore. No, it was, it was a basic old school. I got in trouble. But he says the worst words on the planet. He says, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. And I'm like, how is this going to hurt you? <laughs> but today, <laughs> this message is genuinely, I don't even want to say hurting me more, but it's hurting me more than it's probably going to affect a lot of you. Um, but um, the word of God tells us that God chastises those whom he loves because he is a good father. And so in him dealing with me and prayerfully in him revealing some things to you, we can grow, we can learn that A, he loves us and B, that we should be a reflection of who he is and not a reflection of ourselves. Um, because uh, Isaiah tells us that we are nothing more than a filthy rag in our righteousness, like in, in your pride and you being right, you're filthy. But when you're covered by the blood of Jesus, um, and then that's, that's the righteousness that we are so grateful to God for. Um, and so today's message, you can, is simply saying we leave that part of this scripture out. The scripture does not say do everything to keep the peace. It does not tell you to do everything. Some of us are doing things that God did, just did not call us to do. Some of us are doing things that we were called to do. We don't, <laughs> don't want to do it. <laughs> 
and some of us are called to do things we desire to do it but unfortunately we have not received the holy spirit into um, our lives so that we can produce the fruit of patience and gentleness we talked last week about self-control i got so many calls and text messages like what you doing looking in my window <laughs> i'm working on my self-control you didn't have to put me on blast i was not putting <laughs> i was not putting y'all on blast that was for me and my self-control um today is also for me so if it happens to knock on your door or whatever that's just the holy spirit <laughs> Um, but yeah, so this scripture is telling us to do everything we can to keep the peace. It says to do everything that you can. There are some things, obviously, that you are not going to be able to do. Some of us are just mad all the time, irritated all the time, because we're doing what we think we're called to do to keep the peace. But there are some situations in which you cannot be a peacemaker. It is the requirement or it is the responsibility or it lies upon the other person in order to do what they can do to keep the peace. I hope that makes sense. Um, for example, God has called some of us to, to serve others or to do things for other people. And we are doing it not cheerfully. It says the Lord loves a cheerful giver. He does not want you to give of yourself and be angry about it. He is not telling us to give of ourselves and be irritated. Uh, James tells us, look, be slow to speak. Slow, like, slow down. Be quick to listen. Hear what that person is saying, you know, um, and see, listen to what their needs are. If you're doing something that is not bringing you peace and joy, uh, maybe you shouldn't be doing it. Um... If you know this is what this is what God has called you to do in this time of your life, this is your calling. This is it. Um, and the person is just mean. They're hurtful. They're cruel. Um, then God may be asking you to step away. Do what you can to keep the peace. And when you cannot, you step away. But it's telling you do not. Take revenge. Don't try to get back at people that hurt you. That's what it says. He says to some of us who are trying to um, keep the peace, we're trying to keep the peace by getting revenge or praying for revenge or praying that that person suffers the way that we suffered. And God is saying, you don't do that. That is my job. That belongs to me. Um, there are just some people that just hurt you. And God's like, I got it. I will. He doesn't say, I may repay them. I'll think about it. I'll consider it. I'll weigh the cost. I'll think about what you did and I'll think about what they did. He says, no, basically, if you've touched someone that belongs to me, especially if they try to keep the peace, I will repay them for what they did to you. I, I got it. You don't have to ask. You don't have to wonder. You don't have to worry. You don't have to do anything. All you have to do is do good. You do good. I got everything else. Right? Like I got it. I will repay them. You know, because the Bible tells us that, that you reap what you sow. People who are not Christians, they still reap what they sow. If they sowed hurt towards you and they have, they don't care, then they're going to reap that. Like that is true no matter who you are. So we don't have to worry about people being repaid. But some of us are angry and irritated because we are trying to help people. And we are trying to keep the peace in our homes um, on our jobs and things like that. And the person just irritates us. And so the first thing that you have to do is just say, okay, let me forgive them. Um, and then let me allow God to take vengeance on them. And when you realize, wait a minute, they haven't done anything to be in need of forgiveness. And they haven't done anything for God to take revenge on, then maybe it's you. Maybe you're doing things that God did not call you to do. Maybe you don't have the heart for Christ. Maybe you're just not a reflection yet of Jesus Christ. You're still a selfish reflection of yourself. You don't want to do it and therefore it pains you that God has called you to do it we say send me Lord I'll go refine me God God I'm asking for you to give me the grace and the patience he's like but you I'm trying to give you more grace I'm trying to give you more mercy I'm trying to give you more patience but what I've given to you you won't give to anybody else so you don't have any more room to hold it 
That's why he says, listen, if you want to be forgiven, you have to forgive. You have to set the standard for how you want to be treated. I want my children. I want my children, at least one of them, <laughs> to want <laughs> to want to come back and spend time with me, to want to come and love me as I get older, to want to drive me to and fro. And I have to say to my dad all the time, dad, you're doing great. You're fine. There's nothing wrong with you. But can I help you? Like, you should be happy <laughs> that one of your kids wants to do this. You know, and when I feel my point of getting irritated because I'm trying to do something to help him to make his life a little bit more peaceful, I have to step back and say, wait a minute. I'm not called to do everything. This is my husband's going to love this message. I'm not called to do everything that's not what this scripture says it says but i'm called to do everything that i can you can do everything that you can to keep the peace you leave everything else up to god whether it be vengeance or to open their eyes to see that how much you love them you do what you can my dad and i went to uh and, and my mom we took my parents the other day to um, Golden Corral, which happens to be my dad's favorite restaurant. Okay. Um, I think he likes the variety. But anyway, I just, I happened to be at their house and I heard um, the, the lady, you know, saying, hey, listen, y'all are doing fantastic. Everything is great. You know, watch your sugar intake, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh, okay, great. So we're at Golden Corral. My dad buries all his vegetables. <laughs> all his healthy food is buried. He's like, look, I got vegetables. Yeah, dad, but you got everything that's on top of your vegetables is fried. <laughs> and so I let him eat it. But then when he went back for plate number two, I took the fried food off. And he was like, what are you doing? I'm like, you're not, listen, do it. <laughs> I'm gonna do everything I can. <laughs> And so, you know, I get up, I leave. And then later my parents tell me that there was a lady there that said, I'm sorry, like basically to be nosy, but I, I saw that whole interaction. And sir, she was doing that because she loves you. Like that is God. I didn't have to say to my dad, I love you. This is why I'm doing this. And you're just trying, I didn't have to. All I do is just say, look, I'm taking the food off your plate. Do what you want to do. Eat, eat the rest, eat your fruit. But this you're not going to have. And God opened his eyes through somebody else to say, she wasn't doing that to be mean. And she wasn't doing that because you're a baby. She wasn't doing that because you can't. She wasn't doing that to be hurtful. She was doing it because she loves you. That's why she responded that way. And I say that to say, all you have to do is to do good. Do whatever you can. And then you leave everything else up to the Lord. The problem with some of us is last week's message, we don't have self-control. And if you don't have self-control, it's hard for you to know, oh, I've come to the line. Or this person is not what God asked me to do. This task is not for me. I don't have any joy in it. I have no peace in it. There's no product. Nothing is being produced <laughs> <clears throat> excuse me, through my work. Therefore, God may not have called me to do this in this season. Some people say, you know, I'm supposed to help this person, but it may not be your season to help them yet. And so you're aggravated and you're frustrated because it's not your time to help them. It's not your season to help them. It's not your job to help them. Like, and some of us, it's just because that's God's will for us and we don't like his answer to our prayers. Some of us think God has called us to do everything and he did not. This is what I say to myself all the time because it's the only thing that really helps me. I say all the time, Lee, do everything as though you're working for the Lord. That helps me to understand there is something that the Lord just would not ask me to do. Therefore, I'm not going to do them. Some people are helping so they can earn their way into heaven. They're working. I'm doing everything to keep the peace so that I can earn my way into heaven. But when you do that, that is a sinful action. Because basically you are negating the blood of Jesus. See, our work do not save us. Everything that you're doing is not for salvation. You're not working to earn salvation. And the blood of Jesus, when he got up on that cross... 
when you accepted that, then you're saved. And and the Bible says that he died, right, um, to compel us to do good works. Like, like it forced, I want to do good so that men will be saved, so that God gets glory for what Jesus did. Like, because of what he did for me, I feel so grateful to him. I'm so thankful for the blood that I'm compelled to do good works. And that's why it says your, your faith without works is dead. It's simply saying, well, how can you believe that he did that for you? How can you even be moved by the blood of Jesus Christ and not want to do anything? Then you don't have a real faith. Some of us do not want to help people unless we get credit. We want to do everything and we're looking for people to say, oh my goodness, that was wonderful. Oh my goodness, I'm so proud of you. Oh my goodness, if it weren't for you. Oh my, we're looking for that praise. And the Bible says that when you're looking for that, that is the extent of your reward. But whatever you do in secret, when you do it because you love me and you want me to see your good works because you love me so much, there is a a greater reward for you later on. See, some people are like, oh, I know I'm going to have a bunch of crowns. No, you already got your reward. They said you was phenomenal, fantastic. You was great as you had. Everybody needed to tell you how wonderful you are, appreciate you, give you this, blah, 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 blah. And God's like, that's your reward. You should be happy. That's what you wanted. You wanted the praise of man. You wanted everybody to look upon you. That's why you do everything. And God is saying, that doesn't please me. He wants to reward you. That's why you have to leave everything else up to God. Do what you can do. Don't do everything. Do everything you can do to keep the peace. Sometimes that's not saying anything. Sometimes you just need to be quiet. I tell people all the time, they'll be like, yeah, but they made me so mad. Why? Ask yourself, why did that make me so mad? And if you say, because it wasn't true what they said. All you have to do is tell them the truth. If they still don't believe you, remember, Jesus says, pick up your cross and follow me. Well, if you want to follow Jesus, he says, you're not taking my life. I'm laying it down. They didn't believe me either. They're going to hate you. Why, Lee? Why are they going to hate you? Because they hated me first and you're following me. I'm not trying to get a whole bunch of people to like me. I am trying to keep my relationship with God. He loves me. I'm trying to make sure the Lord knows how much I love him. I I want him to know that I am grateful for what he did on the cross. Like if he doesn't do anything else, yep, it's going to be difficult. Will I cry? Probably so. (laughs) But guess what? He's already done enough. It says, listen, let your light so shine before man so that they will see your good works and not glorify you. It says, so that they will glorify the Father. And some of us are doing good works so that people will glorify us. But this scripture says, do everything you can to keep the peace. Don't do everything um, to keep the peace. It says, do everything that you can. It doesn't even say, uh, do everything. It says, as though you're working for the Lord. That means whatever you're doing. If you don't have the heart to do it as though you're working for the Lord, then one of two things is true. Either God has called you to do it and you have not received the Holy Spirit in your heart to do it with love and joy and kindness and gentleness and patience and and long suffering and self-control. Or he didn't call you to do it. You're doing the wrong thing. My mom says it's like you're on a treadmill. Yeah, you're sweating. <laughs> and yep, you're actually moving. <laughs> but you're not going anywhere. You're in the same place. And some people have that kind of faith where you're just doing a bunch of stuff. You're just doing everything. But that's not what you were called to do. You weren't called to do everything. You were called to do what you can. And then you leave room for God. You leave room for God to bless you. Like some people, um, you know, do everything that you can to keep the peace. Some of us are wanting and desiring. I am personally. I have family members that I really want them uh, to just 
turn their face back towards God. I want them, because he hasn't left them, I want them to really turn their life back over to the Lord. I want God to be the Lord of their life. I want that. Um, and so I have planted the seed. But I am not the one. I know. I, I, I'm confident in that. I won't be the one to water it. Um, I don't know who will. I don't know. Um, so I have to do everything that I can to keep the peace. Um, so that uh, when the person comes to water it, I won't have beaten the seed up so bad and that that it, it, there's no room for it to grow, you know. Um, and so some of us don't understand we're not supposed to save our family. We're supposed to introduce them to Christ so that they can be saved. I cannot save anyone, but I can plant a seed. And then once I plant that seed, then God will send someone to water it. And he is the only one that can give increase. Some of us are stressing ourselves out, nagging people to be saved. Are you living to where they desire to be saved? Are you living a life so that when they look at you, you reflect Christ? They're like, I want that. I want to be, I want that. Like, I see you going through so much, but look at, I want that. Or are you so mean and irritated i don't want to serve the guy i don't want to go to your church <laughs> is that what they teach you about serving god i don't want that and some of us don't realize when you don't reflect christ you can't witness to me you can't say nothing to me every time i turn around you mad you're complaining you're irritated i don't want that i'm better off in the world sinning with and and messing with irritated people you have to reflect christ and that's what you can do you can do that. It is a conscious, intentional decision. You can to do everything that you can to be a peacemaker. He says, my peace I leave with you. Not as the world gives it. See, God has left us with his peace. And his peace says, love your neighbors as you love yourself. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hurt you. That's hard. But Jesus did it. He's like, y'all talking about y'all following me. You're followers of me. Then you have to do that. He said, I'm leaving you with my peace the world's peace is temporary and the world's peace depends on uh, actions you have to love me in order for me to love you back but Jesus says I'm going to leave you with my peace not as the world gives it so it's in you the question is will you allow that peace to grow in you to where you know what hmm let me not say anything at all right now hmm Maybe I shouldn't say anything at all about that subject again. Hmm. Wait, why do they need forgiveness? Oh, wait a minute. They didn't do anything. I'm just irritated looking at them. <laughs> Lord, forgive me. <laughs> Help me. Change me. Give me, create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. You can. God is not calling you to do everything. So stop. <laughs> That's why you're so mad. <laughs> That's why you have no time. He's calling you to do everything you can. Whatever is in you. Use whatever is in you to keep the peace. And then you leave everything else up to him. Amen. If you would like to accept Jesus Christ today as your personal Lord and Savior, today is a really good day to do that. All you have to do is admit that you are a sinner in need of Jesus Christ, the Savior. Um, believe that he died, that his blood covers all of your sins. Um, that he was buried, he rose again, and that he is in heaven with the Father, and he will come back for his church one day. And if you believe that, you are absolutely saved. Um, you can go online to knowwallsnowwhat.com. Uh, you can go down to Best Decision Ever Made. Click there for a link, a tool there uh, that will help you in your new walk with Jesus Christ. You can always reach out to us here at Walls. Now what at gmail.com and we'll be happy to pray with you, pray for you, or to answer any questions that you might have. All right, if all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray. 
Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now saying thank you so much for grace and mercy, God. Thank you for giving us everything that we don't deserve and for your mercy for holding back the things that we do deserve, God. We thank you for Jesus Christ. We thank you for the blood. We thank you for the cross, God. We thank you that he is such a beautiful and good example for us to follow, God. God, I ask that you would reignite that thing in us, God, so that we produce the fruit of the Spirit, God, especially self-control so that we may live at peace with everyone God I thank you in advance for the testimonies that are going to come forth because of your your word today because of your message um, I ask that you would heal all of those God who are ailing in their body God I ask that you would get rid of the cancer and the diabetes and the heart disease God I ask that you would take away the taste or the desire for alcohol and smoking God whatever physically that is in us today God I ask that you would take that out if it does not reflect you I trust you, God. I believe you, God. And I ask all these things in your precious son, Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As we inch closer and closer towards Easter, remember, Easter is not just about his crucifixion. It is specifically about the fact that he got up out of the grave. And he lives forever. So uh, we've got a few more Sundays, and then we will celebrate the amazing resurrection of Jesus Christ. I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.